Hey, hey. Robert. Hello. Hey, Eric. Say hey, Mom. You know, I've got all these smaller questions that wouldn't be enough for an entire YouTube video. But so we'll just make it our potpourri session. How's that sound? Good? Like potpourri. Potpourri. Is that what he said? Potpourri. Potpourri. Uh, <laughs> sacred geometry? You know, what is that all about? There's so many um, signs and ancient, you know, architecture and all sorts of things that are these triangles within triangles within triangles etc and there's supposed to be something sacred about that what is the meaning behind it well he said look mom when it <clears throat> when it comes to uh, the sacred part of it mm -hmm. he says you know it's just another word for divine right okay okay so you know there are certain templates in the universe that uh, that are the basis of patterns of energy Oh. Right? So so he said that's what that's all about. So the geometry is a pattern of energy. It's a, yeah. It right. Is, so is it the fundamental a, pattern and it changes depending on what consciousness does to it? Right. And he said think about snowflakes, right? Every single snowflake is unique and based on how, you know, the the uh, environment that that snowflake was created and it will look differently, right? Mm -hmm. But the same fundamental structure of the snowflake, the, the, the things that came together to create it are all the same. I, right? I see. So he said in sacred geometry, when you're looking at it, you're using, you know, a, a, a certain type of structure, right? Line, straight lines, moving in certain directions, mm -hmm. a few curves here and there, right? But when they, the way that they all come together um, produces something unique, mm. right? And in certain things that we in the physical world would consider um, universal, uh, they create certain patterns that we collectively will recognize. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else on sacred geometry? He said there's more to learn about that shit. Oh, really? That we don't know or yeah. that I don't know? Yeah. He said... Um, Tell us something we don't know. Uh, well, he was just telling me something about, um, he just showed me like a, a visual of like a, uh, like atomic energy, right? And I don't really know how this plays into it, but it's something with, with you know, he said, I misunderstood what he was trying to say. Well, it's physics related. I don't know, something with physics. Okay. Uh, with atomic energy, I guess you would have to have a certain amount of physics involved with that. Oh, yeah. There's something with that. Oh, okay. So he says that he showed me the atomic part of it because there are, there are certain aspects of what you call sacred geometry, and he uses the air quotes, uh, that can become very destructive, like what happened with with atomic bombs and things like that. Mm. That's the part that humans are um, don't realize they've already touched on, right? And when they go deeper into different manifestations of sacred geometry, they'll learn more about that. But thank God, he said, we will have evolved enough not to want to shoot our foot off. <laughs> right? So basically you're saying that that uh, pattern of energy can be manipulated into creating... In, anything, in the yeah, anything in the universe can be used constructively or destructively. Right? Okay. So, so he, said, uh, he said, but the cool thing about that is once we tap into that, and you know, it won't necessarily be called sacred geometry, right? Okay. But you know, that's just one uh, label you can put on something that you know, can be manifested in many different ways. Mm -hmm. So he said eventually that kind of thing will help humans be able to uh, materialize, dematerialize things, Ooh, cool. <clears throat> dimensionally travel. He said shit like that, Mom. Okay. Well, how did so many ancients know about this? I mean, all throughout history you see evidence of these sacred geometry type symbols. <laughs> and what did they he think said it was? He said, you know, just because they were ancient doesn't mean that they're less intelligent, right? Mm -hmm. He said, uh, all of that comes from observation, uh, a great deal of it, you know. And the observation, the things you're, you're inclined to observe, he says, are um, uh, your, your, your instinct or your um, uh, intuition will lead you to, to, to go down that path. Right? So all of those things, he says, are just a few souls that were just very observant paid attention to the natural world, and then started to create a structure with how to explain it. Uh, and that just perpetuates throughout history. 
because all of those individuals who came here to do that and lay the groundwork for that, future generations, from, from your perspective, uh, build on that. Okay. Right? So it's like you leave these breadcrumbs in the past for people in the future to be able to pick up and leave further breadcrumbs for people okay. few, further on down the line from them. Well, how did they get the connection through nature? He said everything in nature, if you start watching it and you really pay attention, you'll notice patterns. There are patterns, right? Mm -hmm. He said, I've used this example before, but, you know, now that we understand, you know, the atom and things like that, if you look at the atom, right, it looks like a little solar system. That's true. Right? And if you look at the solar system, it looks like an atom. You know, everything is uh, tied together in that way. So that's an example of a pattern okay. that I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, he said, I, go, I talked about snowflakes earlier, right? He said, you know, um, um, he said it's, it's got a fractal kind of a look to it, mm -hmm. right? He says, and I, uh, if, you, if one way you can visualize the universe and the, the, the truth of everything is through fractals. Is that the right word, fractal? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because I see it like as little, uh, almost crystalline looking. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, that's the way I look at it. Uh, but he says that, uh, you know, fractal is just one way of visually manifesting it. Sacred geometry can even be manipulated in such a way that it looks like a fractal. Mm, okay. I hope that makes sense because I'm not paying attention yeah. to what he's saying. <laughs> you just, so, you just, it's going right through you. He works differently than any mm. other spirit. Mm. Yeah. Some of them I have to listen and then I repeat him. He just. It just flows through you. He just. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, it's hard <laughs> to keep up with. But you don't even have to. Um, I can just tune out. <laughs> that's cool. But then so, I start wondering, well, am, is he rambling or am I? <laughs> no, no, I'm getting it. I'm getting it. So, but, so in the end, basically to sum it up, sacred geometry is a pattern that is kind of a basic pattern that can be manipulated to change realities uh, depending on consciousness and yeah. conscious observing. He said, yeah, mom, that's right. He said, okay. but it's not the be-all, end-all. There are other things that might look different from sacred geometry, but it's just, but it's actually the same. And those other things, like string theory, for instance, he says is, uh, is just a different manifestation of sacred geometry. And yet sacred geometry is a, is a different manifestation of string theory. You see how it's okay. all, all uh, uh, it looks different, but it's still all ultimately this universal truth. Oh, okay. Interesting. Now, I've been asked uh, a lot of times, this is another question, about the flat earth theory. Apparently, there are people that still think the earth is flat. <laughs> Eric said, uh, okay. <laughs> okay, is that all Sorry. right? <laughs> it's the lucky game. He's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, is it? He said, <laughs> He said, look, he said, not literally, no. He said, but if you think about the universe itself uh, and the earth itself and all those things, he says it's really about perspective, you know. Um, you're taking it very literal. You're seeing what's just in front of you, and what's in front of you looks like it just goes in a straight line forever. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. universe feels the same way. But then if you have a different perspective on it, so if you're able to, you know, as in the physical body, able to take yourself out of the universe and look at it from a distance, mm -hmm. it wouldn't look like a straight line because now you're not in it. Right. So your perspective is different. So it's so, round. He said, again, it's about perspective, right? Okay. So if you take yourself out of it, it will look round, right? Okay. It could look round to you, right? Mm -hmm. But then say, hey, what if you went even further than that and you took yourself out of the perspective of the universe and even the perspective you were from, it would look different. Oh, that's true. It would look, he said, potentially amorphous, right? Oh, okay. Everything is all about perspective, he said. All right. What about the hollow earth? I've asked you this before, and I remember you said that it's not true, but a lot of people think mm -hmm. that the earth is hollow and maybe there's these civilizations within it that we haven't discovered. I don't know. <laughs> that can't be about perspective, okay? He said, he said, that goes back to what uh, we spoke about a little earlier. The other, the other guy, uh, uh, Paul Walker, mm -hmm. was talking about. He said, you know, that's just imagi that's imagination. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So he said, you know, if they need to believe that, go ahead. You know, I say, oh, I'm all for it. Okay. 
But there really isn't anything there. No. <laughs> Not like what they think. You yeah. Know? He showed me this, this visual of a of uh, you know, um, tribal looking people, right? And they're dancing around a lava pool. <laughs> oh my god. That's what he showed me. That's funny. <laughs> he said no. Okay. <laughs> Let's see, uh, ha this is one from a blog member. Have you or Eric ever noticed or drawn a parallel to the God particle? It has to do with CERN. You know that, I think that's a, what is it, a uh, particle accelerator or something? Yeah. And manifestation. I think it is like this. We know that thoughts are things with their own energy slash vibration. Higgs boson attracts other part particles to the energy most excitable. The God particle uh, or more or most defining thoughts and wishes, thus giving it mass. Uh, wait, let me read this again. Uh, the uh, Higgs uh, boson uh, attracts other particles to the energy most excitable, the God particle, or most defining our thoughts and wishes, thus giving it mass as other atomic particles join the developing manifestation, and voila, it manifests in our 3D world. Eric's like this. Eric's like, know. what? <laughs> he said, Surprise. wow. He said, so what wow. What do you think? What do you got to say on that one? He said, well, first let me put let me put it this way. The universe, the physical universe, mm -hmm. has no smallest component. When you find the smallest, what you think is the smallest component, you will find that that component has even smaller components. Okay. To infinity. Mm. Right? Now, he said there is... Uh, there, with current human technology, there is a limit to how small we can go. And we may define that limit as the God particle, right? Mm -hmm. But we'll learn later in, um, in our, uh, down the road that uh, there's even smaller shit <laughs> than that. Wow, that's like what Nassim Haramine says. Uh, that things go from infinitely large to infinitely, infinitely small. small. That's, Eric said that's right. Oh, interesting. They do. There's no smallest or largest component. So what does this have to do, what, what does the God <clears throat> particle have to do with manifestation? He said, let me tell you what my de definition of the God particle would be. Okay. It's all the particles working collectively to create an experience. Okay. So you are, you know, interspersed within that. And all of the different parts that are all coming together to give you your consciousness. Because not just one particle gives you your consciousness. It's the collection of all of them together that do it. Okay. Just like your body is a collection of cells that all working together, cells which then, or atoms which then create cells, which then create tissues, which then create a nervous system and a skeletal system, all that together is what creates your consciousness in the physical body. And that is being powered by this energy that is non-physical, that is what I was mentioning earlier, all those different things okay. coming together, right? So he said earlier, I said, you know, the particles are all working together. He said, but underneath the particles is there's this energy that is uniform throughout all things. That's where the consciousness really comes from. Interesting. So the manifestation part, he said, <clears throat> I'll tell you manifestation in the physical world. He said, I'm a little conflicted about some of the, some of the teachings that, you know, now I'm becoming a little conflicted about some teachings that say, you know, you can just manifest whatever the heck you want. Mm -hmm. right? He says, at this point in human evolution, you know, people are going to be going around doing that, thinking, oh, I, I can do this, I can do that, and then it never fucking happens, mm -hmm. right? Because he said, there are some times, you know, he said, if you think about it, for some people, that could seem very, uh, I'm not, I don't want this to sound judgmental or anything, he said, but it can seem very egocentric. You think you're in control of every fucking thing? Mm -hmm. He said, but I'm telling you, you came here to live a physical life to learn certain lessons. And so if certain things you try to manifest that are not going to make sure that you learn those things, then they're not going to happen. Ah, oh, I see. Right? So it all has to heaven, honor the lessons you're here to learn. Right. He said, so heaven itself is a different story, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's a different plane of existence where you still learn lessons, but they're rooted to lessons that are relative to this existence. Mm. So, but, but he says, we have a little bit of, uh, we're a little bit special because <laughs> we can do whatever, manifest whatever we want. Mm -hmm. Because he said, you know, when you think about it, you don't really need to manifest money here, right? Because you have nothing, all, all your uh, needs are met here. Mm. 
So you nice. know, you can go and, and, and manifest those things, mm -hmm. but it's just going to seem uh, unfulfilling. Right? Sure. So over here, anything that gets manifested, we tend to, pers to pursue uh, from a place of um, um, pure emotionality, if that's even a word. <laughs> right? Okay. So it's all about you manifest things and the lesson that, that will bring you the kind of emotion that um, you uh, already hold within your, in yourself. So it helps you to release that emotion, right? And the lesson in that is uh, getting, getting a deeper level of the emotional energy that you are. Mm. Fascinating. Is it in your mouth? <laughs> that is pretty cool. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to do another session on uh, potpourri things. Because this was fun. It was just a little bit of a yeah. little collection. So everybody stay to the end. Watch the, the title pages. Get the information you need. And uh, check out the next video. Bye, yeah. everybody. Bye, Robert. Bye, Eric. Bye, Mom. I said, I love you. He's love like, you. <laughs> <laughs>